I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And don't mind the sound of my yarn simmering on the other side of my stove. In this dye pot, I have 16 cups of water. And I'm bringing in 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. And in here, in this dye bath, I have added no acid yet, none at all. And things are cold, and I'm considering trying to do some kind of soft variegated thing, starting cold with no acid, seeing how much I can move the colors through. We're gonna see how it goes. Before we jump in to the dyeing project, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Luann. Luann, thank you so much for being my lab partner today. Let me go put on my deluxe rubber respirator, safety glasses, and gloves, and we'll get started. Okay, the odds are that we'll make a mess out of things, but you know what? We're going to have some fun while we do it. I'm going to start off with a new to me color. And this is persimmon. I don't think I've used it yet. Uh, in fact, I haven't even taped the little label to the lid until today. So I don't know how this color is going to go, but what my plan is, is to layer our color, and then we're gonna work it through uh, the yarn. But we're just starting the layer of color. And I have a yarn mop that's featured in another video just off camera. Uh, and I'm using that to wipe my hands on. But I'm trying to work this color through the yarn to help it sort of travel down. Now I know we're going to have pastel colors on either side and well, I guess I'll have to be okay with that a little bit, but we will be able to add more color once things are hot. And we can also add a little more color right now. I dried off my hands and I'm coming in with another layer of color in here. We're already sitting on the stove, so I'll be able to turn it on without moving anything. But now I can sort of try to dissolve the dye but if I don't press very hard, then things are gonna stay very much at the surface. But we have enough water in here that if I separate the yarn, the colors, while they might spread to either side, they're more likely to go through a little bit deeper. And once we start heating things up, we can add more color. It's just at that point, it'll strike faster. At the far end, I'm gonna start doing the same thing, but using some fawn. This is a color uh, that is a bit of a golden brown kind of color. And I bet it breaks. Ooh, I see some orange speckles in there. Uh, and the pan is again completely cold. And I am working this color through. And you might notice that the color is spreading down to the other side a little bit but we have that down there really nicely. However, I think I still wanna add some more. So I'm coming in with some more of it. When I'm sprinkling this powder on, I'm trying not to just like add a big clump because some dyes do tend to clump a little bit once they're mixed with water. And so to avoid that, that is why I'm trying to do a thinner layer. And we have plenty of water in here to help us get, I think, hopefully, reasonable coverage with our yarn. And as I move my hands, woohoo, we did it splatter. <laughs> and now for the color closest to me, I have Golden Poppy, which like the name, this should be still a hint of some orange, but it should be way more golden, more yellow. Now, sometimes colors behave differently when they're cold than they do when they're warm. And so it's possible that some of these colors will bloom a lot more uh, and get more saturated once we add acid and then add heat. 
But for now, I actually like just the single pass of that color a lot. I like where we are. This has a very fall feeling to it. And I'm gonna start adding some acid. I think maybe we'll start with about five tablespoons of white vinegar total. And I'm gonna work this through a little bit. I'm not rubbing the yarn exactly, but I am sort of shimmying it in place. Okay. And now I'm going to turn on the heat to start heating things up. And I'll come over and check in. And once things are warm, I'll also bring you back over so you can see how things are doing. Okay, the yarn has been, oop, I'm going to reduce this to low. The yarn has been heating for a little while now. And I think that just what all the color has absorbed. Yeah, it looks like that the color is all struck, which is great. Now, we have a choice. And when we flip, we can decide if we want to leave the yarn like this. Or depending on how many colored patches we have, we might make another choice. All right, I see one hint of white uh, lifting it up, or not white, but like pastel, like over there. You know, we ended up with really, really good coverage. All right, I think I'm gonna go with it and just keep it and leave this. Um, I was gonna say that like we could go, and one thing I was considering was speckling on top of this, which, I think I might revisit this and do this kind of like variegated color for like the base and then we can speckle on top sometime. But I want to see what it looks like dry and how cohesive it feels. So someday we could over dye this, but that day I don't think is today. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this for the rest of the 30 minutes and then we'll remove it from the dye bath. It has been 30 minutes. <laughs> and India's outside barking, but I'm going to remove our yarn. There are some deeper areas of color that I'm noticing, but I'm excited to take a closer look at how this turned out once we get to see it dry, because that would answer how well this would work moving forward. Of course, there are some colors and pigments like I think lilac is one and some other like neons that have blues that break are some that even adding the color on with no acid that would start striking to the yarn right away. So I think we lucked out a bit. But anyway, I'm going to set our yarn aside to cool and once it's completely cool then we can wash it. Let's wash our totally not a candy corn yarn. It's not a candy corn, right? It's kind of a candy corn. Let's see. I'm not anticipating seeing any color bleed because we did see all of the color absorb. I just added a little bit of soap. You might wonder why sometimes I decide to add soap in the first rinse versus the second. And there is no reason. It just depends on my mood. Although sometimes if I think there's going to be a lot of something to rinse out, which I'm not seeing anything here. But if I think there might be something to rinse out, then I might do soap in the second rinse just because. But anyway, I'm now going to rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my twin dryer, and hang it up to dry. How well this technique of layering the powders with a lot of water in a pan works depends not just on the yarn base, but also the pigments that we're using. Uh, we were able to get a soft spread of color, but you can see we definitely have some deeper patches where the color struck more where they first landed. And so for as fun as it would have been to attempt to speckle each color on itself in the various areas, I'm glad that I didn't at first because we can revisit this in the future and try more and have more fun with it. Overall, these colors are nice and soft, but the area where you can feel the most softness, I think, was really the top. 
uh, the top and outside of the yarn. And I have a feeling that there's some dye that didn't dissolve or spread out as well, and those are the more deeper patches that we see, which I'm not mad at. I'm glad, again, that we're looking at this without me modifying it further. But there are definitely some colors that wouldn't work very well for this kind of technique. And that includes fluorescence, like fluorescent fuchsia or purple pop, and it includes greens, like kelly green and emerald green. Colors that don't strike that quickly, uh, but spread a lot. If I had used emerald green, it would have overtaken everything in the entire pan. On the flip side, there's some colors like pink orchid or frozen blue that strike to yarn extremely fast. And so that also wouldn't necessarily work as well, because even with no acid, it would be harder to spread them out without dissolving them in some liquid first. So for the best way to get success with this kind of technique, it likely is better to dissolve your dye powder in water before pouring it on so you can spread it more. But then you have like can have some issues with volume and placement because if it's too concentrated then it's going to stay too much in one place i don't know there's there's many reasons why you may want to try one way or the other we were able to spread the powders out a lot uh but you know and we got great coverage but i think we got a little bit lucky with the pigments here so it's just a heads up that you might need to think about uh, some of these other factors Luann, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dive Hut Weekly. I really hope you love your yarn. If you at home would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner or a last minute lab partner, uh, go and check out the listings that are in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Last minute lab partners can pick from videos I've already started filming and you get to see the fiber content, plus some hints about the technique and final colors. I'll have a link to the listing down in the video description. And Luann, thank you again for being my lab partner. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I still can't help getting some candy corn vibes from these colors. I do want to play with this palette again, not just to do the sort of speckled and variegated colorway that I mentioned, but to pump up the volume of all these colors. Uh, I haven't played with, I think the brown I used was Fawn. I haven't played with that enough. It's a beautiful brown, a beautiful true brown, and it deserves a little bit more attention here on the channel. If you love the yarn I dye, make sure you go and check out the yarn I have listed in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There's hundreds of skeins of yarn featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos, and sometimes there's some mystery surprise offerings. Uh, whether it is a little package, wrapped package for Valentine's Day, something wrapped for Hanukkah, or just a fun yarn dyeing game live stream <laughs> that we might have here on the channel. You can find the links down in the video description. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.